people. We are live. Hey, everyone. Hi, peeps. I'm Mitch. I'm Philip. And this is the Mitch and Philip channel coming to you from San Francisco, California, woo, 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 where today it is 72 degrees and this afternoon it's it has cloudy. become very cloudy. The forecast here says mostly cloudy. Yeah. But it's say, really pleasant. Though. Yeah, it's pleasant, but cloudy. Yeah. So uh, it's um, a change. We've had so many wild swings in the weather here. Two weeks ago, it was 95 oh, degrees while we were doing this show. And last week, it was fortunately cooler. Over the weekend, there was a big Rain. rainstorm. Yeah. Sunday rained a lot. So there's, you know, the whole gamut of weather around here. I, I don't know what that means other than just, you know, climate change things. I don't know. Oh. It seems kind of curious. It's not, not unusual, but it just seems really erratic. It's not we don't, I don't I think we're experiencing the seasons the way that we once did. Yeah, it always got it gets it's cold and foggy in this most of summer and then September rolls around and it starts getting warm and hot and things happen. Yeah. Although the rain was a little strange. It was. But you know, welcome because we need the rain here. So we want to say hello right away to Sunset coming to us all the way from the East Coast. Great to see you this afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. And Nate. King Blue is here. Great to have you here with us. Thank you so much for joining us today. So today on the menu, we have Halloween crinkle cookies. Woohoo. And if you saw the thumbnail for this video, then you already know that they are very on theme for Halloween because we have both orange and lime green cookies. And they're, they're two ever so slightly different recipes that's very easy to put together. We'll tell you how to do that, and we'll show you how to decorate the crinkle cookies once they're baked and they come yes. out of the oven. So we've got lots on the schedule today. So let us know. Is the picture looking good to you where you are, and do you have good audio? We hope you guys are able to receive us okay. In case you're wondering what we've got going on in these martini glasses, this is actually a drink with no name at this point. <laughs> mm. We were planning a mocktail that I put the ingredients for down in the description. And that was called a pomegranate cosmopolitan mocktail. And unfortunately, when I went to grab all the ingredients out of the refrigerator, I assumed that we had pomegranate juice because we usually always do. And it turned out that what was supposed to be the bottle of pomegranate juice is actually a bottle of cranberry juice. <laughs> and then when I went to get the <laughs> orange, yeah, I went to get the orange juice out for the cosmopolitan mocktail and there was only a tiny bit left and we didn't have enough time to make more so i had to completely switch gears and we've got something else completely entirely different going on here than the recipe that we printed in the description and we'll tell you about this later so this is actually cranberry juice pineapple juice and lime juice mixed with a little bit of tarani cherry lime syrup and we'll yeah it definitely needed a sweetener because this baby was a little on the tart side so we will definitely give you the rundown of what the ingredients for this are before this live stream ends. Okay, so let's take a look really quick at, we have some finished cookies. Let's show what those look like. So we'll show you what we're going to be doing and then we'll show you how to draw the roadmap to get there. So this is what we've got going on. You can see on this side, we have crinkle cookies that are orange and they're flavored orange. Philip is using fresh grated orange zest to get that flavor profile. And then on the other side of the tray, we have lime green crinkle cookies, and those have been flavored with lime zest as well as powdered ginger. Yeah. So these are very yummy flavor profiles. And like I mentioned earlier, if you saw the thumbnail picture, we're gonna use a whole variety. Let me show you. <laughs> Got a whole tray full of goodies here. We're gonna use some white chocolate and dark chocolate wafers to create dipping chocolates to dip the cookies in. And then we've got a variety of non prize jimmies, sprinkles, cake sequins. And we're going to use these lovely accoutrements to decorate the Halloween crinkle cookies. So this part comes a little bit later. To get started, though, we've got to make some cookie dough. Yes. And shall I preheat the oven at this point? Uh... Too soon? Not soon enough? We're, we're... No, why do I change the dough? Okay, we're going to wait until we so finish the dough. So the cake roll the ball, then powder roll the ball. Okay, there is that. So Philip is going to show us how to put this together. We're starting out with a packaged pre-made dough. 
Take this a is yeah. Well, this is actually a really good product. This is a Pillsbury product. Let me get this up here closer to the camera so everyone can see it. This is Pillsbury prepared cookie dough. I call this tube dough, even though this is really just a plastic sleeve. It's yeah, not really a tube, really like a tube, but it's in a cylinder. So we're going to use this. You may have seen us use this product before if you've watched some of our other cookie videos. This is a great base to add a lot of other things to, and it can expedite your cookie baking. So if you're busy and you think, oh, I don't have time to bake anything from scratch. Well, this can help you get a little jump on the time to put cookies together because this lovely dough is already made for you and it takes really well to adding other ingredients to it. My face. So what we're gonna do is, Philip is gonna show us how to make this happen. We're gonna move these mocktails aside so they hopefully don't get spilled while we're working. And what we're doing is, let me, let me read off the ingredients really fast for those of you who want to know that. Uh, there's also down in the description below where you're watching this live stream, we've also published in the written description, the ingredients for the cookies. And so let me run them by you though, really quick. We're going to start out with a half of the tube of this Pillsbury prepared sugar cookie dough. We're going to need one eighth cup of all purpose flour, one teaspoon of fresh orange zest. And About Philip half. is, yeah. And you're going to give us a lesson on proper zesting technique. Well, that's not how I do it. Well, and I think it's a proper zesting technique because you get all the zest without going into the pith. Okay, so in addition to the orange zest, we're also going to need an eighth of a teaspoon of orange gel food color. And you want to use gel food color rather than liquid food color so you don't add any extra moisture to the dough. Uh, for dusting, once the dough is finished, and Philip scoops it and rolls it into balls. The balls of dough get dusted in confectioner sugar or powdered sugar. So you need about a quarter of a cup of powdered sugar. And then white or dark melting wafers to dip them afterwards. And whatever kind of sprinkles you want. Now, of course, we're, we've geared all of this to have the colors of orange, lime green, purple, and black for Halloween. But you could make these cookies with any flavor profile that you like. And of course you can use whatever color food coloring you like and decorate them any way that suits you as well. This recipe, uh, mix it up a little bit and maybe use mint instead of orange. And you can make Christmas cookies that are green or red. That would be lovely. So we'll tell you all about this as this unfolds. But the first thing that we're gonna do is start out with the cookie dough. Cookie dough. Okay. What's gonna do is cut this in half. Okay. I marked it yesterday right in the middle. I measured it. <laughs> With the ruler? With the tape measure. Okay. So it was, it's impossible to really yeah, get yeah. it by weight. So you just have to do the best you can. Baggy. Okay. So we're going to put the other half of the tube dough back into the refrigerator. If we have time before this live stream ends, we may make two batches of cookies. We'll see how that goes. We have a lot of decorating to do once the baking's done, and that's going to take up a bit of time as well. Right. So let's stash this back in the fridge. Okay, well, the first thing I'm doing when you do this is wash your hands because you're going to be using your hands a lot doing this. Right. And I also have here on set today some uh, plastic pull on gloves for Philip to wear so he doesn't get the food coloring stains all over his fingers. So I see Karen has joined us. Hey, Karen. Hey, neighbor. Great to see you, Karen. Thanks for hanging out with us this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to have you here. What can we do is break up the dough. Okay, we're breaking up the dough. Just use your fingers and mush in the little pieces. This makes it easier to manipulate once we start adding the other ingredients. Yes. And we just took this dough right out of the refrigerator. It did yeah. not need to be thawed out in any way because it's not frozen, it's just cold. I need me to get you some more paper towels. Mush, mush, mush. Okay, so as you can see, it's very simple. We're just gonna bust it all up into smaller pieces. There we go, that's good. Excellent. Okay. Oh, okay, you're gonna do a whole rinse thing. Well, okay, so there, let me hold this up so you can see. So all Philip did was just break up the cookie dough half tube into smaller bits so it's easier to mix together with the other ingredients that we're going to be adding to it. Okay, now we have the other ingredients, okay. 
Let's start with a flower. Oh, I don't know. Hmm. Measuring. Eight of a cup. There we go. Which is two tablespoons, by the way. Okay, so you just measure the flour and then dust that over the broken up cookie dough. Yeah, it's coming in. Okay. Wow. Excellent. Oh, that's all I need that for. Then, the zest. So oh, what gosh. I like to do, usually I see people on, on, on TV doing this over a bowl. And I'm like, well, it goes everywhere and I can't measure it. I can't really see what I'm doing either. I like doing it this way because then I can... I can see where I've been scraping and know how far I'm down I'm getting and I'm not getting too close to the white. I mean, it all just piles up here anyway. So you don't want to go down into the white no. or the pith because that has a supremely bitter flavor yeah. to it. And we don't really want to introduce bitter to the flavor profile of these cookies. I'm just going to take half. What's that? So, and as you can see, Philip has not gone down into the white or the pith of the orange at all. It still looks very orange. So what you've done is you've really got basically the Cadillac version of zest going on. Well, here. it's just the, so that's, and that's about a teaspoon or maybe more, but whatever. But we're gonna go with it oh. as a teaspoon. Also good. A little bowl sprinkler. So you're just gonna add that fresh zest put right, that right in there. In there. Okay. Oh my gosh, I can really smell the orange. Yeah. I wish we had mm. smell-o-vision. This, this is so citrusy and so lovely. Oranges are especially oily. And you get a real good aroma. It smells really good in here. Hey, I want to say hi to Cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline. They're in the house. Great to have you here with us this afternoon. Thank you for coming to hang out. We really appreciate it. Okay, so, so far we've got the broken up cookie dough the eighth of a cup of flour, and the teaspoon of freshly grated mm -hmm. orange zest. Yep. And now we get our hands dirty again. And just moosh it all together. We get all the flour. Yeah, we've made this recipe several times before, and we've tried stirring it with a spoon or mushing it with a spatula. It really works best when you just get in there with your hands and sort of knead the dough together like you might do for bread. Wipe up all that goodness down there. Okay. And then just sort of fold it into itself a few times. You want to make sure you're getting the zest evenly distributed throughout all of the dough. You can see it. It starts, the dough's already trying to turn a little orange. And you can, you can smell You can it. definitely smell the orange. That smells awesome. Just moosh, 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 For those of you who joined us late, we're drink, drinking a no-name mocktail because we had to whoop it together really fast because our original plan went mm -hmm. sort of sideways when it uh, wound up that we unfortunately didn't have the ingredients in the refrigerator that we usually have. So we went with a little different juice mocktail today, and we'll tell you about this before this live stream is over. Meanwhile, is it time to start preheating the oven? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to preheat the oven now. We're going to use our June countertop smart oven today, and the baking temperature for this recipe is 350 degrees. So let's get that set to 350. Okay, voila, that was easy. The oven is preheating. So on we go. The next... Eyeballing the... Uh, well, looks, we're eyeballing we it, but size it's is, approximately uh, an eighth of a teaspoon. Of course, you can add more or less food coloring depending on how intense you want the color to be. Yeah. Do you want your oh, gloves before you go and them. stick your fingers in there? Okay. Voila. Why does it always do that? We always get these notifications from the computer wants to restart and update right while we're in the middle of a live stream. <laughs> and it happens almost every time. I have never been able to figure out on this Windows 10 system how to turn that off because we certainly do not want the computer restarting itself in the middle of our show because that would be the end of it. Okay, well, okay. Uh, there we go. So now we're going to, well, you're going to get in there 
and just really mix all that food Thank coloring together. in. In there. Right. Now, sometimes there's some different dough products that if you overmix them, the dough gets tough and then you have tough cookies or muffins or whatever. But this dough we found, <laughs> you can work it and that really isn't an issue. Okay, now we're starting more to get some color orange. going on there. That looks really good. So the most work is just, you know, kneading the ingredients into the dough. That's for sure. But, once you, but that's not that hard. But it's really starting to create an amazingly bright shade of orange, and you did not have to use that much colorant to get that to happen. So just so you know, this particular brand of gel food coloring is called Ann Clark. We got this from Amazon. And this color is called pumpkin orange, which is exactly what we wanted for this purpose. Now, you could use uh, food coloring and use some red and yellow and mix it together to get orange. But that can be challenging to get the color the same every time. So we went ahead and got a tube wow. of orange. orange. And there you have it. That's the result Boop. of the food coloring. And that looks really excellent. So. The cookies themselves only have four ingredients in them. And then the fifth ingredient is the powdered sugar that we're going to use to dust the cookies before they get put on the baking pan and go in the oven to bake. So Philip, <laughs> really, I know. Okay, so, all right. So well, put, you know, something in there to keep them dry. To keep them dry. Yeah, like, there's some sort of powdery agent stuff or something. With, with glove hands. Okay, so okay. the next stop is we're gonna need a little bowl. Is this big enough for your rolling around? No, like, no, no, no. Okay. I need a. Well, I, I, at least I'm melting. Well, then just use one, and I'll get another one. Okay. Well, maybe yeah. it's oh not that much sugar. Yeah, you don't need much sugar. Okay, okay. but let's, let's see. This is first. I like to make my little balls. So okay, so you do it in the order that you want. So what we're going to do is Philip's going to use a scoop. This scoop measures about one and a quarter inches across in diameter. And you're just taking level scoops of dough. Wow. Okay. Get them all out here. Scoop after scoop. Okay, so it's just a matter of, you know, Lather, rinse, repeat here yeah. until all the dough is used up. You got 10 cookies out of this. I love the orange color. When they said pumpkin orange, they weren't kidding. This is very much pumpkin orange, and it's lovely. Hey, I see Ralph Jenkins has joined us in the house. Hi, Ralph. Great to see you all the way from Pennsylvania. Ooh. We have several guests this afternoon or this evening, depending on where you are all the way from the East Coast, and we sure do appreciate you coming to hang out. I hope Jess is with you, and if so, say hi, and if not, tell them hi later. Okay, so what uh, uh, Karen says she loves those scoops, and she has four different sizes. Yeah. We have three different sizes, I think. So the large one's broken. Oh, well, then we're going to have to get some new ones as soon as we get situated in our new kitchen. Just got right here. Okay, and as you can see, that worked out really well. There are exactly 10 evenly sized scoops of dough that Philip has okay. put to, rolled yeah. or scooped out here for us. So this can be set aside for now. And we just make little balls. And after the scooping's done, you're going back in and just rolling them between your palms yep. to get them nice smooth balls. <clears throat> Tom's Food Factory is in the house. Hey, Tom, great to see you today. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. We are making... Halloween crinkle cookies and Philip's got the dough just put together and scooped and now he's rolling it into spheres and then there's one more step after that before they go on the baking pan and get popped into the oven. I also want to say hi to Bobby Joe, Ski Girly, all the way from the East Coast as well. We have lots of our East Coast friends here today. That's so cool. So thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate it. And we're into the Halloween episode. So for the next few weeks, yeah. you'll see us baking and preparing several different Halloween treats. Yummy. Not only sweet things, but also we have some savory ideas for Halloween as well. So every Tuesday for uh, the next foreseeable future, well, uh, until it's 
Halloween, <laughs> we'll be doing different baking episodes every Tuesday to show you how to make some really cool and also really easy treats that don't take very long to put together. Huh? Okay, so there you see, let me bring these over here just a little bit closer so everyone can see what we've got. Okay, that noise indicates that the June oven has already come up to temperature. So Philip has rolled all of these scooped balls of dough out nice and smooth. And then there's one more step to go before it's ready to get them baked. Powdered sugar. Um, what would you like powdered sugar? Tom says he's been driving in the evening to make extra money for Uber. Ah. And how is that going? We actually, I don't think we know anyone who is an Uber or a Lyft driver, but we take Lyft often to get around the city here, and I really like it. So I hope it's going well for you, Tom. I just put a little bit of powder sugar in a bowl. Okay, and now what's going to happen? Just drop the ball in the bowl and swirl it around. I'm going to do a little... Do you want a spoon? Yeah. Okay, well, you could use a spoon if you want to. Okay. Like so the goal is excess powder sugar. And let's can you show everyone what that looked like when you oh. took it out of the sugar? Sorry. So yeah. you've got a nice coating of the confectioner sugar all over the exterior of the sphere of cookie dough. It doesn't have to be too, you know, totally even. Just uh, and it, it also doesn't need to be super thick either. Yeah. In fact, less is more. You want it you want it coated, but you don't want it like totally buried in it because then the sugar will just melt off and make a mess when you bake it in the oven. Hey, Marcel from A Little Fish in the Kitchen has just joined us in the chat room. Welcome to the show, Marcel. It's great to see you all the way from Texas. Ooh. We have lots of friends in Texas. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us today. We really appreciate it. We are making Halloween crinkle cookies. And as you can see, Philip has prepared some orange sugar cookie dough the dough actually the base of the dough came from pills a pillsbury tube style of prepared dough and then we added other ingredients to it including flour fresh orange zest and some orange food coloring to get this lovely shade of pumpkin orange here for the dough and the last step that philip's involved in right now is rolling the prepared balls of dough in powdered sugar and then placing them on the baking sheet We've already got our oven over here, all heated up and ready to go. So as soon as Philip's done preparing this tray of cookies, they're gonna go right into the oven. And the baking time for these cookies is 13 minutes. Not 12, not 14, 13 minutes. We found that gives a really nice all around bake, but doesn't make the cookies uh, so concrete hard once they cool down. They still are a little crunchy on the outside, but they remain soft on the interior. That's my personal preference for uh, a bake on a cookie. But if you like your cookies more well done, you could go another minute or two farther. Just keep in mind that they're going to be super crunchy. And so if that's how you like it, that will work just fine. But we like our cookies with a little bit of a soft interior. So we found that in our experiments that 13 minutes for these cookies is the perfect time. So we're baking it, in case you missed it, 350 degrees in uh, our June countertop oven today. You can also do this in a regular con uh, conventional wall oven, or you can do it in a toaster oven as well. Okay, one more to, one go. More to go. Half a tube of the dough, along with the other ingredients that we add to it, makes 10 cookies with the size scoop that we use. Oops. Oh, okay. okay. There we go. Now we have a big sugar mess all over the counter, but that's how powdered sugar is. It's kind of like paint. It just travels everywhere. Yeah. Okay. And so really quick, I'm going to bring this tray over and show you. This is the baking tray that fits perfectly inside of the June countertop oven. And Philip has all this dough prepared for these 10 cookies. And these are ready to go in and start baking. They are. So, there you wow. go. Philip is going to pop these babies in the oven right now. Woohoo! Cookies in the oven. All right. And we're going to set a timer for 13 minutes for these little beauties. Boom. Bing. Okay. There we go. So that's underway. Let me welcome Mona to the house. Hey, Mona. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to join us today. 
And Janine Johnson has joined us from Carlsbad. Hey, great to have you here. What's the weather like down there in Southern California today? Here in San Francisco, it's cloudy and it's uh, about 70-ish, 72. So it's not cold, but it is very cloudy outside today. Okay, so we're getting tidied up a bit from the actual baking portion of the show today. And very shortly, it'll be time to show you how to decorate some of these yummy, and I can say yummy because we've tasted these before because we've made them a few times as a test. Uh, we're gonna decorate the cookies with some melting chocolate as well as a whole selection of sprinkles and jimmies and cake sequins. If you're not familiar with what cake sequins are, we'll show you that. And we've got lots of good, lovely little treats to make all of that happen. So why don't we show one more time what the finished cookies you already have look like. Philip oh. baked two batches yesterday. As you can see, one batch was orange and this other batch was lime. The difference here is you substituted lime zest for the orange zest, yeah. and obviously you used uh, green food coloring. Yeah. And then you had one more ingredient in here that these don't have. Tell us about that. Powdered ginger, just because, you know, amp it up. Amp it up. Okay. We love flavor. <laughs> and just so you know, the uh, ingredient list for the crinkle cookies, both the orange version and the lime version, is in the description right below where you're watching this live stream. So you can copy and paste that to your digital recipe book if you want to try these at home. And, ooh, we're making this lovely drink. Now, this is this drink that we're drinking is not the drink, the mocktail, that I listed in our description below because, unfortunately, unbeknownst to me, we didn't have the ingredients I was expecting to find in the refrigerator when it came time to make the drinks. Usually, I double-check all of that. But I thought, well, I was only one in pomegranate juice. We always have pomegranate juice. Well, guess what? The backup bottle that was supposed to be pomegranate juice in the cabinet turned out to be cranberry juice. Grab one. So that's okay. Things happen sometimes. So we just went with a different mix altogether. Uh, what we're drinking right now is actually all juice. We used three parts cranberry juice. One part pineapple juice, one part lime juice. And because that mixture was extremely tart, yeah. <laughs> we also added one part of Tarani cherry lime flavored syrup. This is really yummy and it's also sweet. So this, I think, gave yeah. it, took the edge off the bitterness. It's, it's still tart, but it's like now it's sweet and tart. Yeah, it's now it's, it's kind like, of a oh sweet God, tart mm, thing. Mm. And of course, as you can see, we just have a lime wheel. I will probably okay. mix up another batch of these before this show ends because these are yummy and we're going to suck all this down pretty quickly. Mm. Mm. Ah. Tom says tomorrow it's going to be 90 in Columbus. Oh. And then Thursday it's going to be 65. That sounds like kind of <laughs> how it's been around here. Two weeks ago it was 95. Mm -hmm. Last weekend it was pouring rain. Today it's cloudy. It seems to be different every day. Okay, so we took a look at those cookies. We've got uh, nine minutes before those pop out. So do you want to start doing a little decorating before, or should we wait till those come out? Well, we can decorate these. So, so these have to come out. I mean, even they come out there. No, we don't. I know. I'm just talking about yeah. these. Okay. So like we showed you before, we've got orange and, well, these are kind of limey green, I think. But they have a lime flavor profile. They're super yummy. And what we're going to do for decorating these is we're going to use some melting wafers. These are from Ghirardelli. We got these at the grocery store. And we have white chocolate and dark chocolate, and we're gonna do a little bit of both. And so what we need is we like to use a glass bowl and heat this in the microwave. So let's start with the white. Now, one of the things to know about these when you're heating them in the microwave is that you need to really use short intervals of heat rather than leaving it in there for a longer time because it can burn easy. Yeah, and you don't you don't want to cook this chocolate. You just want to heat it up soften. enough so it'll soften and you can stir it to melt. Because what happens is when you put this in the microwave, you leave it in there for a little while, you take it out, and the discs still look exactly the same. 
That's because they don't start to really melt until you take a spoon and start stirring them up. So just be aware of that. You don't want to take these too far or get this chocolate too hot because it'll fall out of temper and then you'll wind up with cake frosting instead of dipping chocolate. So what I'm going to do right now is put, I just poured a little bit of this as you can see, it's probably what, half a cup? Yeah. Of the melting wafers. This is the white chocolate version and we're going to pop this in the microwave at 50% power for 30 seconds. And that won't be enough, but I'm going to take it out after that and just give it a quick stir and then pop it back in. And just so you know, because it does make a difference, we're using a 1250 watt microwave oven. And like I said, it's going to be at 50% power. So if you have a 700 watt oven or a 1350 watt oven you're, or something else, you're going to have to adjust the time on this for the particular wattage of the microwave oven you have. Like I said, ours is 1250 watts. So I'm going to put this in at 50% power for 30 seconds. Voila. Now, once we get the dipping chocolate ready, we're going to need to have some sprinkles. So I'm going to let Philip choose what sprinkles or other goodies he would like to use. When I did the cookies for the thumbnail for this show, I used white dipping chocolate with what Philip's going to pour out right now, which are orange and yellow cake sequins. And what cake sequins are are just little small disks of sugar that are colored. They're like teeny tiny Necco wafers. Yeah, itsy bitsy tiny Necco wafers. That's a great way to describe it. So what you want to do is maybe add a little bit more to that. Yep. And the look I was going for with the white chocolate and the orange and yellow cake sequins was sort of a candy corn kind of look. Now, these cookies aren't going to taste anything like candy corn because the orange ones are flavored orange, but we're going to get a sort of the Halloween look of the color scheme of candy corn. So this has been in the microwave for 30 seconds, and I want to show you this now. This is just, just ever so starting to get soft, but it's going to need more time. So I'm going to go in at 50% power for another 30 seconds right now. These are fun. Okay. Tell us what those are. It's a blend of Jimmy's, those little round cake decor things. Um, cake sequins. Little stars and little tiny drojets, which are little itty bitty balls. So they're like pearls of sugar. Yeah. And each color has all the same mixture. And there's uh, blue, purple, pink, red, yellow, lime, and blue. Yeah, hold it upside down so people can see the bottom. Oh, yeah. There you go. So you can see there's six colors in this particular thing. Hey, really quick, I want to say hi to some of our friends who have joined us in the chat. So we want to say hi to Suzanne from Suzanne Sweet Kitchen. Hi, Suzanne. And Kamahija Blige is in the house. Hey, Kamahija, great to have you here today. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We are in the process of baking Halloween crinkle cookies. And we're right now, while the first batch is in the oven, we're going to use some cookies that we already made yesterday to do some decorating. And we've got the chocolate melting in the microwave oven. Now I've done two rounds in the microwave oven at 30 seconds each for 50% power. And now, as you can see, the discs still look like they were, you know, hard as a rock. But once you start stirring it, then you'll see they start really getting smooth and getting melty, melty. Now, I think this probably needs just about Fine, another yeah. 15 seconds. You really want to be careful. Air on the side of underheating the chocolate because once you overheat it if you, you take it too far you can't turn back and you'll wind up with chocolate that will never set solid again so i'm going to pop this back in for just 15 seconds to get this a little more melty melty orange and black jimmy well, those are so cool now for the melting chocolates whether you're using the dark chocolate or the white chocolate you're going to have to experiment if you have a microwave that's a different wattage than ours. Like I mentioned, ours is 1250 watts. You're going to have to adjust the time for melting these wafers, depending on the wattage of the microwave oven that you're using. Okay, so there went the 15 seconds. So we've done this for a total of one minute and 15 seconds. And 
that got us a really nice, smooth result. Mm -hmm. Now you may say, but guys, why didn't you just put this in for a minute and 15 seconds all at once? And the answer to that is that we've tried that. And what happens is it's overheated. The thing is, microwaves don't heat everything uniformly. So if you leave it in for a longer time, it just means part of it's going to get hotter and the rest of it won't. So you really need to take it out every now and then and stir it up so you keep distributing the heat. Right. That's well said. Thank you for your help with that. So as you can see now, let me hold this up a little bit better. This is nice and melted. So this is great. Now, usually when you're doing dipping chocolates, if you want to, you can use your meat thermometer and measure the temperature of this. This material adheres best to the cookies and gives the best end result when you're using it when it's somewhere around 89 to 90 degrees. That And I like to really, really stir this a lot and make sure it's really going to be able to stay nice and tempered. Those are for when the cookies come out of the oven. Yep. We're also going to need a tray for putting on the things that are dipping. And I like to put a piece of parchment down, which I neglected to get out. It's right over here. All right. This where you This 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 cart, this kitchen cart, usually sits on the other side of the room, but we move it over here because we set up our station for our computer and microphone and other equipment to run the live stream. So that's why things are in different places in the kitchen right now. So there we have it. We've got our chocolate ready and it's going to be time in the not too distant future to, I'm going to move this out of the way so we have more space. And these cookies are going to come out in less than a minute. So we're going to prep this. This will save this one to use it for the dark chocolate later. We'll melt some more chocolate so if you missed the chocolate melting portion we'll do the dark chocolate in a little bit and show you how to do that okay so what do we want to do first which uh, i'm going to dip them and then i'll let you put the sprinkles because okay. yeah. he did a brilliant job with the sprinkles for the cookies for the thumbnail <laughs> that you saw it i thought it turned out great now there's a lot you can there's a lot of ways that you can get the sprinkles on. You can dip the cookies in, but that tends to make a mess and leave a lot of chocolate behind. And we don't want to ruin these expensive dragees and jimmies and sprinkles. So Philip's just going to apply them by sprinkling them on. And let's show you how that works. Okay, I'm going to make sure this is nice and stirred up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one of these cookies. Oh, well, before we do that, let's get the cookies that are baking out of the oven. And let me check in with the chat really quick. And I want to make sure I didn't miss anyone. Adventures with Eminem are in the house. Hey, Eminem, great to have you here. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us. They puff up a little bit, but they will sink down and become like that. And you want them to sit on the pan yeah. for a little while before you use a spatula to transfer them to a cooling rack. Because they're very soft at first, and they need to set just a little bit. Yeah. Otherwise, gonna... you're going to squish them up and spoil yeah. the nice circular shape. So, hey, Rhubarb and Cod joined us in the house. Susan, great to have you here. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us. It's always a pleasure to see your name come across our screen. And the cookies that Philip prepared the dough for at the beginning of the show just came out of the oven, so they're going to cool. But Philip baked two batches of cookies yesterday, so we have both orange and lime green cookies. And now the decorating portion. Okay, woo, woo, woo. okay so okay. we already have the white chocolate ready to go. And I'm just gonna take one of these cookies and I wanna see if I can make sure I show everyone how to do this. I'm just gonna dip the front portion of the cookie into the white chocolate about halfway up the cookie. Let's see if we get there. It would be better if I had a deeper bowl, but that's okay. There, okay, so that is what we're looking for. We just wanna have about half of the cookie dipped in the chocolate and then we're gonna place this on a baking sheet that we're just using as a landing pad. And we've covered this with a piece, piece of parchment so the chocolate that may be on the back of the cookie doesn't make it stick to the surface that we're setting these on. And as you can see, Philip is just shaking on carefully the orange and yellow cake sequins that we've mixed together. And like I mentioned before, what we're going for is sort of a candy corn sort of look with this particular version. That looks great. 
That's awesome. Okay. Okay. So I want to take this spoon out of here because it's kind of cramping my style. Let's go in. You have something else prepared yeah. that you're ready for? Okay. You want to do a green one next? Sure. Okay. So next I'm going to take one of the lime crinkle cookies and I'm going to do the same thing. I just go in and we're not really getting much of this on the back at all. I'm trying just to keep the chocolate on the front of the cookie, as you can see like that. So I'm going to put this one over here so the sprinkles don't get mixed up. And I want to move this because people can't really see what you're doing. There we go. <laughs> yeah, they're a little bit big for the openings in that bottle. That looks good. Okay, so as you can see, this is super easy. We just need to give a little shaky shaky. And the in this case, the Jimmy's are on the white chocolate. That looks really good. Yeah. Now, if you want to be really um, careful or perfect, you could take a pair of tweezers and put these on and really evenly, but we're sort of into the, you know, like, I don't know, more organic look to it. Well, wow. So I don't think we need to be super uptight about how the sprinkles look because they're so festive. What's not to like? Now, one of the other ones I want to try is you've got these gorgeous colors and you actually blended that up yourself. Just like it. Tell us about, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, tell us what's in there. It's just the, uh, the, the special uh, mixture of the color of the, you know, the color it shows the lime and the purple because they're Calvin color. So. Right. So this is a container that has six different mixtures of goodies. And these have, like we said before, these have jimmies, non prize mm -hmm. dragees, little stars, and cake sequins. Yes. And there were six different color combinations in here. Phillips mixed together the lime green and the purple because that's Halloween colors, like Phillips said. So we're going to go in. Do you want to do those on an orange one or a green sure, orange? Okay. So we're going to go in with another cookie that's nice. These were baked yesterday, so these are super cool. You really need to let these get completely cooled to room temperature before you dip them in the chocolate. Otherwise, the chocolate will just melt off of the cookie. So now you can see Philip's going to transfer the cookies we just baked to a baking rack to cool down completely. We left them on the baking sheet for a while so they don't become misshapen when you try to move them. So right now, actually, let's let you finish that before I dip this because I want you to be able to pour the sprinkles on here. Oh, I know. I love the sprinkles that we found. We found a lot of cool sprinkles. Philip went shopping to a popular baking supply store that's uh, just a little south of here in Daly City. Called, called Sugar and Spice. And they had an awesome selection of cool stuff. Oh, it's amazing. And then we also got a few things from the grocery store. And then one of our housemates brought home, including several things, including these lovely black and orange that goes from Target. So we've got a bunch of different stuff that came from several different sources. I will say that, you know, we often buy things from Amazon and have them delivered. But what I found was is because of the time of the year, a lot of times things for seasonal things get jacked up in price. And these were in the, you know, $2 price range at Target and online at Amazon, similar products were $10 for a bottle like this. So that's a significant difference. And when you're decorating a lot of cookies like we are, you need to economize where you can. So going to the store directly actually saved us a lot of money when it came to the jimmies and other decorations that we're using. So let's go in here. I'm going to dip another one of these in like Sam, just going in with the front yeah. of the cookie. And this is a technique you just need to sort of work out whatever way works best for you. I'm just frosting or, you know, dipping the cookies and getting them about half covered on the front with the white chocolate. Right. Mm -hmm. Marcel, cover the chocolate with the goodies. There, and that worked out really good. That looks super cool too. So once these set a little bit more, we'll hold them up closer to the camera so you can see them. So Marcel is saying that, uh, she has a sprinkle problem because she has a huge bin full of seasonal sprinkles. Oh. We have lots of sprinkles too, and we already had several things, but for some reason we didn't have anything that was really Halloween themed or Halloween colors. So we went shopping and got quite a few things. Not only the tray that I showed you earlier, but we also have 
this other huge tray full of stuff. So I think we may do a sprinkle haul video. Spent ninety dollars sugar and spice. And that, yeah, that, so that made for a lot There's of a lot cool of sprinkles. Stuff. We don't have a close-up cam today, so I can't show you these close-up right now. But we'll do another show and show you our sprinkle haul in the not too distant future. I got all I, all I got was colors for Halloween and Christmas. One of the things I thought was really cute was some of these non pariah containers have a lid that looks like a mini cupcake. And I think these are the kind of containers that we might want to save and repurpose for something else. Because I think these cupcake lids are supremely cute. What's not to like about that? So, okay. Now, what do we want to do next? You want to use up the rest of this white chocolate sure, while we've got it here? Off. Okay. So let's go in here. Go I'm going to go let's in some cookie with some more cookies. Coming. And then Philip's going to keep using sprinkles and decorating these babies for us. There we go. That's pretty good. This is actually the uh, chocolate melting wafers is a very easy product to work with. You're just going to have to work on making sure you get the melting time right for the wattage of microwave that you have. Now, Tom from had mentioned earlier that he doesn't have a microwave. So if you don't have a microwave or you just don't like using the microwave that you have, you can melt this another way. You can use a double boiler with water in the bottom pan and put the chocolate melting wafers in the top and then just stir them consistently while the water is boiling and you'll get a nice melty melty effect yeah. that way without having to use a microwave mm -hmm. oven. Okay, let's get in here with a couple of green ones. Oh, those look so good. And once we use all of this white chocolate, we'll think about melting some of the dark chocolate and see how that works out. I just love the colors of these cookies. These are so festive. And I don't know, is there anyone, I'm sure there must be someone on the planet that doesn't like sprinkles or jimmies, but we sure do. And it's a really supremely easy way to add very festive decoration very quickly to your cookies. So as you can see, these come together really fast and they're supremely festive. Lovely, that looks excellent. <laughs> Tom says, she keeps telling me she doesn't like sweets, but when I make cookies, they vanish. <laughs> That happens around here too. I have no idea how that happens, but it does. So we've got a little bit of the white chocolate still left in the bottom of this bowl. So let's go in and try and retrieve as much of this as we can and get it on the front of a couple more of these cookies. So you can finish these off with some yeah. decorations. Let me see, I think we can probably do one more. There we go. So as you can see, I don't really have any chocolate on the back. I just have chocolate on the front. Okay, and there's one more. These look very, very festive. I love it. Actually, I can probably get another one out of this. So let's go in here with another green one. There's a little bit more of the... There we go. Okay, All I've right. got one more. There we go. Those are very festive. Supremely cool, really easy to do. Tom says he loves using the double boiler. It's never failed him. We're just, I think the whole microwave thing is just a matter of convenience here at our house. Now, I may be able to get one more out of that. I keep no. saying that, and then there's another one. So go shall I just go for it? Go for it. Okay. Do you have room to put it yeah. on there? Okay. So there's a little bit more of the white chocolate still left in here, and we don't want to leave any of this behind. Now, if you heat this and it gets <clears throat> solidifies on you again, you can always remelt it. And if you don't use it all, you can scrape it out of here and put it in an airtight container and save it and remelt it again for the next time you need to dip something. Those look so good. Okay. Okay, those are super cool. So let's hold these up so all of our friends can see what we've been doing. So it's a little over bright here towards the front of the screen. But as you can see, we just have the cookies halfway dipped in the white chocolate. And then Philip has done a beautiful job 
of adding sprinkles, jimmies, cake sequins, drages, and other little lovely goodies to the top of these cookies. So how festive is that? Supremely cool, and as you saw, very, very easy to pull off. So now, how is your drink doing? Are you running out of drink? Yeah. Okay, so let's take a little break from the cookies really quickly, and I'm going to show you how we mixed up this no-name mocktail. <laughs> and the reason it has no name, for those of you who missed the beginning of the show, is that we were originally going to be making a pomegranate cosmopolitan mocktail this afternoon, but we did not have all the ingredients I was expecting to find in the refrigerator. And so we had to go with plan B. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use some cranberry juice. We're going to also use some lime juice. I also have a container that's already open that we used before that's pineapple juice. And, oh, it's already out here actually. We're going to add, because these are all sort of tart flavors, we're going to add some cherry lime tarani because this actually works really nicely with our flavor profile and this will add some much needed sweetness yeah. to this drink. So let's go in. I'm gonna mix this all in a cocktail shaker. I have a three part cobbler style shaker. There's a lid, there's the strainer, there's the vessel. We're gonna fill up the vessel halfway with ice cubes. So we're just gonna run down here to the freezer and grab a few ice cubes. There we go. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is use a shot glass that I have right over here. Can we put that right there just for now? Thank you. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use three parts cranberry. So I'm using three shots. These are two ounce shot glasses. And this is enough for two martini size portions, or you can serve this in a low ball over ice if you want, and it would be enough for one drink if you're gonna do that. So we're gonna measure out three shots of the cranberry. 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 Okay, there we go. Cranberry. Now we're gonna go in with the lime. If you have the ability to use fresh squeezed lime juice, that's preferable because it does have a fresher taste. But if what you've got, like we have just out of a bottle from the fridge, that works just fine as well. Okay, so we're doing one shot. So that's two ounces of lime juice. And then we're gonna do another shot, two more ounces of pineapple. And there you have it. Mm. Okay, now we're also going to do two ounces of the cherry lime syrup. So let's measure this out. We're just gonna just, just about polish off this jar. We had just enough. We're waiting for our monthly Tarani delivery. It was supposed to be here last Friday, and we got a notification that a couple of the flavors that we had ordered were out of stock. So they just held the order until they had everything we wanted. Okay, so we've got everything in the shaker, and the next thing that we need to do is make sure we get the strainer securely on the vessel and the lid securely on the strainer. And I'm gonna go in here for a really vigorous shake right about now. And I always like to make sure that I smile when I'm shaking because mocktails are supposed to be fun. Okay. Doorbell. We don't have to answer. It's probably just a delivery, right? Yeah. It'll still be. Well, it may still be there when we go out there later. We'll find out. Okay. So I've got the lid off of that. And then I'm just going to dispense this into the martini glass. Just so you know, you want to shake, if you're using a metal shaker like this, you want to shake the ingredients until, like this is, the outside is very cold and frosty. And there we have it. Mm. A nice, lovely, cold juice mocktail. So I still have some of mine from earlier. We garnished these with lime wheels that we just cut with the paring knife from a lime. It was super easy to do. And I think this looks very festive. Okay, I just gulped mine because that's been sitting there for a while and it's no longer cold. I'm gonna taste this when it's really nice and cold from the shaker. So, cheers to you. 
Cheers to all of you for joining us this afternoon. We sure do appreciate it. Let's give this a taste. Mmm. Mmm. Ooh, this is yummy. Yeah, it's got a whole sweet tart thing going on with all the tart juices that we used. But the sweetness from the Tarani takes the edge off of that and actually makes for a really nice combination. This is very refreshing. Mm. Oh, Terry is in the house. Hello, Terry. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. Great to see you today. So now we have a few more minutes. Shall we do chocolate? some chocolate? Philip's going to grab the bag of dark chocolate melting wafers, and we're going to treat these the same way we did the white chocolate melting wafers. A little bit more. There we go. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to pop these into the microwave. We're doing this at 50% power. And we're going to go in at first for just 30 seconds, just like we did with the white chocolate, because you really, really don't want to overheat the chocolate or it will never set up again. It'll just be frosting for the rest of its life. Well, it's, you know, it's tasty, but... But it won't, it's not going to give you the effect that we're looking for here, with this, which is a nice hard chocolate coating on the exterior of the cookies. Tom is saying, as someone who's been through similar health problems as Philip, he's looking very healthy, and I'm glad. Thank you. <laughs> I agree. He, you, He's doing everything he did before he ever had a heart attack and more actually, because your fitness program has been oh amped up a bit. Three days a week, I have this exercise program to learn from my physical therapist, and lifting weights and stuff. And so it only takes a half an hour, but. Yeah, but you've stayed on the program for almost a year and it's really made a I difference. lost at least 10 pounds. And that's a good thing. The doctor is happy about it. My doctor that. was always happy with losing weight. No, I can't. Well, I finally had to lose weight. It was A little slowly. So this didn't really get us very far, so I'm going to go in like before for another 30 seconds, and we'll see how it looks after that. Smell the orange. Oh, thank you, Mona, for saying that. That's a lovely thing to say. Mona says, this is the perfect afternoon get-together. Mocktails in a martini glass, sprinkle cookies, and great company. We agree. <laughs> and thank you so much for joining us, Mona, Cheers. and all of our other lovely friends in the chat today. It's always so much fun. We're very fortunate that we have a very active chat during our live streams mm -hmm. and that everyone plays really nicely with each other, and we really appreciate that. Mm. These are so yummy. So just so you know, the recipe for this is not down in the description below because we changed the drink that we made after we set up the live stream. So I will go back in once this episode is over and I'll put the ingredients for the drink that we actually made today. And we'll save this cosmopolitan mocktail for next week. Okay, so let's go in here and see what this dark chocolate is looking like. It's like the others are a little more. Yeah, you can see that it still looks like wafers and like it's not really melted, but once you put a spoon in here and start to stir it, they're pretty soft. Yeah, they start to break down really easily. Like a candy bar left on the dashboard. That's exactly what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now this is still a little tiny bit too solid, so I'm going to put this in for just 15 seconds at 50% power, and we'll see how we're doing after that. Fifty percent power for fifteen seconds. Now, if you missed uh, when we melted the white chocolate before, we're using a twelve hundred and fifty watt microwave oven at fifty percent power. If your wattage of your microwave oven is different, then you'll have to adjust the melting times according to the wattage of your oven. But also, as we mentioned before, if you're like Tom from Tom's Food Factory, you can also melt this in a double boiler, or as the French say, a bon marie. marie. Okay, so as you can see now, that extra 15 seconds made all the difference, and now we have this lovely, mm. melty, melty dark chocolate. Okay, like pudding. So I'm gonna stir this around just a little bit. One other piece of information I wanna share is, if you find when you melt your melting wafers that they're melted, but the consistency is thicker than you want it to be. You can use a tiny little bit of Crisco 
and add that to the chocolate and then stir that in. And that will help thin down your chocolate. You don't want to add water to this product because all that will happen is what? It'll feed up. And then you'll just have a big rock hard oh, chocolate mess. Break. Yeah, it's just not going to work out. So that looks pretty good. We've got this nice and smooth. Yeah. That looks really good. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to ditch this spoon. And we're going to take some of these cookies. Let me see. We can't see those on the camera anymore. We have some of these cookies that Philip pre-baked for us yesterday. And I'm going to go in and dip some of these in the dark chocolate. So let's start out with one of these lovely orange ones. Let me show you this technique again. I'm actually taking the front of the cookie and putting it down into the chocolate. So I get perfect. About half of the cookie, oops, I dripped in there. About half of the cookie on the front covered with the chocolate. Notice that the back doesn't have much, if any, chocolate on it at all. We really just want this effect to be on the front of the cookie. And then Philip is going to add some different goodies to the top. I'm going to go in here and go ahead and get some more of these yeah. ready to go. Start them up there. Mona wants a spoon. Yes, we need uh, spoons and we also need a replicator and probably a transporter so we can beam these cookies to your house. Okay, so I'm gonna just go in and continue dipping these cookies into the dark chocolate. Like I say, I'm just taking the front of the cookie and dipping it approximately halfway in. And like you can see, the back doesn't really have any chocolate on it. It's just on the front. What I like about doing it this way is you can still hold on to the cookie without getting chocolate all over your hands. So there we have it. Let's go in with another orange one. This is super easy to do. Thank you, Terry. Terry says these look great. I have to agree with you, Terry, and I'm not saying that because we did it, but I just think these look very festive. To me, these look like the kind of cookies that you might see in a case in a bakery. And I there's no easier way to make things look festive than sprinkles, non prize dragees and cake sequins. I and mean, this is just fun in a bottle. Let's try one of these lime green cookies in the dark chocolate. We'll see how that looks. So you can see I'm just dipping in the front side of the cookie in the chocolate. Let's put that on this side. And we're gonna go in here with the rest of these. I'm gonna try to use up all of this dark chocolate with the rest of the cookies that we have. Okay, let's go in here and do that. There we go, one more. These are so fun. And they look very festive. Yeah. Yeah. This has been really super fun. I love decorating things, especially cookies and getting to work with lots of sprinkles and goodies like that. Then we get to eat them later. Yes, we do. <laughs> Those look so good. Okay, here's another one. I'm gonna do, we have two more orange cookies left. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these. Sure. And the orange and chocolate is really good together, too. Yes. Terry is saying that they prefer half-dip type of cookies because sometimes there's too much sweetness and when they're completely covered with chocolate. And, yes, that does make perfect sense. And uh, that's one of the reasons we're doing it this way. The other is that you can hold on to the cookie and dip it in the chocolate without getting the chocolate all over your fingers. Yeah. So let me go in here with that. And we've got one more cookie from our pre-baked batch. So let me go in with this and scoop out the rest of this lovely dark chocolate. Okay. And we've got one more from our pre-baked batch. There we go. Okay, so that's all the cookies we had pre-baked. We actually had what, 20? Yeah, 10, 10 of each 10, color. 10 of each color. Okay, so one more little paper towel. Mix it up. Okay, so we've got a little bit of the dark chocolate left. So what I'll do is uh, scoop this out and put it in a airtight container, and we'll save this leftover chocolate material for the next time that we need to do some dipping in chocolate. Okay. Which will probably be in the not too distant future. Oh, well, that's a really good idea. Mona is saying these would make great gifts with the printed recipe for the mocktail. 
I think that sounds like a great idea. Really? And I think uh, we probably have to serve these and give gifts on, you know, a fiesta plate, right? I don't really want to give any away of our dishes, but I might buy some specifically to do that. So I think these cookies would look great on an orange plate. Now, these particular ones are going to have to set up for a little while longer since we just did those. How are those looking? Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, I can touch it without my being frothy in my finger. Okay. Frothy. Is it likely that we could give them a taste? Oh, yeah. Okay. So one tray we have dark chocolate. The other tray we have the white chocolate. These look really festive. Let me hold these up again so everyone can get a good look at these. This is how the cookies turned out once they were dipped and decorated with the different little sprinkles that we had available today. I think these look supremely festive. Thank you. So are you ready to give these babies a try? Oh, heck yeah. Okay, you're going to go for a lime one? Uh -huh. Okay, well, I'll go for an orange one so we can each tell our friends how these two different flavor profiles taste. Mm -hmm. Now, as you can see, these are green and these are orange, and the flavor is different. These are flavored with orange zest, as you saw, and these are flavored with lime zest and as ginger. well, the addition of some powdered ginger. So cheers oh. to you. Cheers to all of you. Let's give these a taste. Mmm. Mm. 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 Oh my gosh, this is so orangey. Really lovely orange, orange flavor. Mm. The ginger's more subtle, but it's back there. That's really good. And it's a great way to elevate this regular thing. Mean, the, the sugar could go from the package, it's, you know, Casey is itself, but it is. But I think add a little zest or some spices, and whoa, it amps it up quite a bit. What I like about the zest is it gives the. Mm prepared cookie dough a fresh element that it doesn't have oh. right out of the tube. And this, I don't think if we serve these and we didn't tell anyone that it was prepared dough that anyone would think that it was a convenience product. This is really super easy to do. There's the doorbell again. That's the second time in the last 15 minutes. Oh. We'll have to run down when we're all done here and see what's been delivered on the porch in the last half an hour. Well, over here. Karen says they definitely look festive and the sprinkles really make them. I totally agree, Karen. Sprinkles take these to a whole nother level because they were cute. They're cute when they're plain. I mean, these would be super lovely to serve at a party or an event or to take on a cookie tray as a hostess gift. But I think once we do the dipping chocolate and the sprinkles, it really amps up, really levels up the presentation. And if you subscribe to the belief system that you eat with your eyes first, then going the little extra mile to make things look super cool and pretty really isn't they that hard. They look delicious. They do look delicious, and they are delicious. Mmm, these are so good. Mmm, I love it. So, so yummy. Janine says adorable cookies. I agree. I think these are so pretty. If I do say so myself, I really think these are festive. And as you all saw, this is super easy to do. Terry is suggesting to use holiday decorated bags to place the cookies oh. and mm -hmm. then tie it with a ribbon with the cocktail or mocktail recipe attached to the ribbon. Sounds like a good idea. I can print out something cute on the printer yeah. that has a Halloween motif with the recipe for maybe the cookies and a mocktail that would go with it. That would be super lovely. Okay, so as you saw, we made these lovely Halloween crinkle cookies today that are decorated by dipping them in chocolate and adding tons of different kinds of sprinkles. And we also drank this lovely cranberry pineapple lime concoction mm. that we came up with on the fly because our original plan sort of circled the drain. Mm. Well, we made the first batch without the cherry lime trying. It's like... Mm, yeah, oh, cranberry so juice, tart. lime juice, <laughs> and pineapple juice together is supremely this is, tart. This is pretty good. But once we added the Tarani cherry lime, we got plenty of sweetness going on. So now we have sort of a sweet tart combination of juices here along with the Tarani in it. I think it tastes really yummy. Okay. Thank you so much. Marcel says, super cute, ready for fall and Halloween. We are. We've got our pumpkins out on set. For those of you who've been watching our show for a while may remember we actually did these poor painted pumpkins on a live stream about, I think, two years ago. So they've been hanging around our decorations. We've used them many times. If you want to see how to do that, it's really easy. They're just plastic pumpkins from the arts and crafts or hobby store. 
with some pore painting Very light. done on them. They're super light. And they're really easy to do. So you can check out that video. That's in the on the arts and crafts and DIY playlist here on the Mitch and Philip channel. And peeps, there you have it. Halloween crinkle cookies with both an orange and lime flavor profile and these lovely mm. chocolate dipped and added decorations. These are super festive and as you saw, really, really, really easy to do. So we hope you give this a try. If you do, We'd love it if you take a picture and put it on Instagram and then tag us in your post so we can check out how this recipe worked out for you at your house. Okay, so that's all we've got for you today. We've run a little bit over time, so we appreciate you guys hanging out with us while we finished all the details for these lovely cookies. Let's show these off one more time. This is the batch that we did with the dark chocolate, and Philip has the batch that we did with the white chocolate. Super yummy, mm -hmm. very easy, amazingly festive. These will make a great splash at a Halloween event at your house. So let us know if you give this a try because we'd love to see how it turned out for you. So thank you all so much for joining us today and happy Halloween early. Just so you know, next Tuesday, we have another cookie episode planned for you. We're going to take some store-bought cookies and really dress them up with some royal icing. Yeah and some other sprinkles. We have a bunch of different sprinkles that are none of the sprinkles you've seen here today. We'll show you how to do that. It's really, really easy. We're using meringue powder to make the royal icing instead of raw egg whites. So it makes it a little easier because you don't have to separate eggs. And we'll show you how to make the royal icing next Tuesday, as well as show you what we're going to do with some store-bought cookies to decorate. And that'll be a Halloween themed episode as well. So thank you all again for joining us. We really appreciate it. I'm Mitch. I'm Bella. Coming to you from San Francisco. California. And we'll be back next Tuesday, if not sooner. So we hope to see you then. Happy Halloween. Bye. Thanks for joining us today. See you next week. <laughs>